I am Commander Tyrael, and welcome to War Thunder Naval. Today I'll be showing you some top tier coastal gameplay in the Project 206M, a scarily effective weapon in the right hands. I'll also be teaching the basics of Torpedo Boat Doctrine, which will help to make you a more useful and effective skipper in this type of vessel. The Project 206M Storm is a late Cold War era large torpedo boat of Soviet origin. It is one of the last torpedo boats ever designed. In the West, the Project 206 is known by the NATO designation Turia. It was produced in the 1970s for the Soviet Navy and exported to its allies in small quantity, used for coastal patrol and anti-submarine warfare. In War Thunder, this torpedo boat is the final vessel in the Soviet coastal tree. Captains who have it in their fleet will have an exceptional weapon capable of wreaking havoc and halting enemy offensives. The Turia class is a derivative of the Shershin class torpedo boat. It improves on the maneuverability of the previous model by adding a hydrofoil. Firepower is increased by adding a radar operated 57mm gun turret located on the stern of the boat. This was added in response to NATO craft fitted with the 76mm Otto Malara. Located in the rear, in order to keep the bow as light as possible, its size helps improve the seagoing capability of the vessel. Two torpedo tubes are fitted on either side of the superstructure. Air and surface targets can be engaged by manually operated 25mm 2M 3M gun on the bow. The boat features a limited sensor suite that consists of the MR-103 Bars Fire Control Radar for the 57mm gun and a surface search and navigation radar. The turret has a high rate of fire that allows a fire time of 16 seconds before overheating. The 57mm weapon performance is formidable against other torpedo boats and it can be incredibly effective against most early destroyers and frigates. The rapid fire of the weapon scattered from bow to stern against one of these boats or destroyers may be enough to finish off its crew before overheating. It is worth noting that the dead zone that the main turret has, to be able to shoot forward, the boat will need to be turned 30 degrees from port or starboard. The 57mm has two types of ammunition, a high explosive fragmentation isendenary round and an armour piercing round with explosive filler and ballistic cap. The AP rounds have a prohibitive cost of 5,000 silver lines per belt. However, this belt is great penetration at short to medium ranges and is highly effective against larger warships such as destroyers and frigates. The trick of this ammunition is to focus the hits on important modules such as the bridge, turret, engine room, rudder and large ammunition depots. This will cause overwhelming damage, making them easy prey for allied vessels or the storm itself. As required by its role, the Project 206 emphasizes speed. Three diesel engines provide up to 15,000 horsepower, and this is enough to reach a speed of 82 kilometers an hour. The Project 206 is meant for green water operations, meaning that it is a coastal defense vessel with some ocean-going endurance or mission capability. Attaining maximum effectiveness in motor torpedo boat operations requires a complete understanding of their capabilities. Like aircraft, they require experienced and qualified operating personnel, adequate base and tender repair facilities, and expert ground and servicing crews. Any commander directing motor torpedo boat operations for general or specific tasks will give consideration to the characteristics and capabilities of his vessel. The motor torpedo boat is a relatively small craft with great speed and striking power, essentially offensive in nature. Weapons consist of torpedoes, machine guns, and sometimes depth charges. Its main defensive power lies in its small size, speed, maneuverability, and ability to lay smoke and cruise silently at slow speeds. The primary mission of motor torpedo boats is to attack enemy surface ships. Their high speed and torpedo armament makes them suitable for surprise attacks against enemy vessels on the surface, at night, or during low visibility. Secondary functions which motor torpedo boats may be called upon to fulfill are as follows. Emergency capture point suppression, escort duty, aircraft screen and scout. It must be borne in mind that employment of these vessels for purposes other than which they were designed drastically shortens their life expectancy. Success in a torpedo boat operation requires extreme alertness and intelligence, surprise, deception, stealth, 
daring and courage are all elements favorable to success. It should not be necessary to state that the boat's armament must be kept ready for instant action on every mission. Enemy contacts will happen at any time and appreciation is required for such readiness. Immediately after an enemy is encountered there are two steps to be taken. Offensive action and clear communication with your teammates. Rough seas, especially from ahead, reduce effectiveness of the boats and limits the endurance of their crews. The wakes of motor torpedo boats at high speeds are visible at considerable distance and both from the air and surface and this factor should be considered when planning your operation. Comparatively difficult to detect when properly camouflaged, surprise is your best potential weapon. Motor torpedo squadrons based at strategic points for defense of important passages and straits will be effective to deliver surprise attacks upon enemy surface units approaching or attempting to pass through them. Every effort must be exerted by motor torpedo boat personnel to obtain the greatest results with actual and potential weapons, which means inflicting maximum damage on the enemy in no case should an enemy vessel sink with torpedoes or ammunition on board if they can still be fired. Motor torpedo boats will be less visible on approach from ahead and it is likely that the enemy will have less firepower to direct at you. If circumstances do not favour or warrant an expectation of successful escape, motor torpedo boats will close to absolute decisive torpedo range. The effectiveness of an attack primarily depends on approaching the enemy to close range undetected, where a reasonably accurate estimate may be made of his rate and direction of movement. In planning an attack you need the following. Accurate information. Full expectation of the surprise element. High speed after a decision is made to attack. And firing the torpedoes at close range. In firing torpedoes at very close range, the distance required for the exploder to become fully armed should always be considered. Motor torpedo boat personnel must acquire a sense that will tell them whether they can be seen by the enemy or not. If you use the basics of these doctrines, I am confident that you will be able to punch above your weight and become a ruthless torpedo boat commander. If you have any tips or experiences to share on the high seas, leave a comment below. If you've liked this content, hit subscribe as there's many more to come. Until the next transmission, Commander Tyrael, out.